Hey guys, Ivan here, and we are right now hours away from the Mr. Olympia 2024. And in this video, we got some last moment final updates from a couple of guys. And we got some other very interesting things. So the first thing we're going to start this video with before we get to the actual physique updates, uh, we're going to talk about what happened at the press conference when Sean Ray asked Hari Chopin, a very very interesting question probably the most interesting question you can say the only real question that was asked at this press conference so Sean Ray asked Harry Chopin why he walked away from the stage last year now like I said there were a lot of like tough questions that the press asked these guys but this one was my favorite for sure and and Sean Ray actually pressed Hari into answering this he tried to avoid it twice right so he talked about some other things but sean ray didn't want to give up so he asked him like last year you, you looked like you didn't accept the result and you walked off the stage what happened and you know hari still spoke about some other things uh like uh, that he's going to bring his best condition this year he's going to bring his best version uh, he just completely ignored the question but Sean Ray probably expected this, so he pressed him, he pushed him, said, if you lose again, will we see the same routine? Are you going to walk off the stage again? And then Hari actually gave us an answer. So basically his answer was that the reason why he walked off the stage was because he had the low blood sugar and he didn't feel uh, good health-wise, you know, physically he felt ill. And he stayed, he congratulated uh, Derek, and he stayed for that one photo, and he walked away. Which is true, Hari did stay, he did congratulate Derek, he stayed for that one photo, but this is not his first Mr. Olympia, he knows how these things go. It's not just one photo, there's usually a couple of photos in the top five, then a couple of photos of the top three, and then in the end, the winner stays, but Hari didn't want to do that. You know, he took one photo, top five, and just walked away. And they actually called him back. They called him, come back, come back. He ignored them. Maybe he didn't hear them. I don't know. Maybe what he's saying is true. Maybe he actually felt ill and he thought he was going to faint or something like that. And he had to walk away. Whatever the truth may be, he did give us the right answer. You know, his, his excuse was, I was sick. You know, like, like in school. Why didn't you show up to the class? I was sick. So, I mean, I don't know if I buy it. Uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't. I, I just feel like he thought he deserved the victory, and he was mad at the judges, at everybody. And what he did was disrespectful, especially since Derek is uh, his teammate. But um, yeah, maybe let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he actually felt sick, and uh, that's why he walked away. Will the same thing happen this year if he loses again? I don't think so. Unless he feels uh, ill again, I guess. I think he learned his lesson. I don't think he's going to do it again. You know, there was a huge backlash after he did this. Everybody talked about it. And even now, one year later, it's still talked about. But yeah, we got an explanation. We got an answer. Basically, it was because uh, he felt ill. Do you guys believe that? What do you think? Tell me down below. All right, the next thing we got is something we already basically talked about yesterday, but I don't know if you guys caught this angle. So Wesley Wissers actually filmed a story of Samson Dauda taking his shirt off and uh, posing at a press conference. And, you know, I gotta say, there is a difference in conditioning, the way it looks from this angle compared to what it looked like uh, from those angles uh, from the audience and, and, and for the live stream. Now, basically looking at this, I think Samson is going to be in better condition than I thought. Am I saying that he's going to be in sort of condition that Hadi and Derek will probably bring? No, no, most likely not. But is he going to be, like, lean enough or off? Now, looking at this, I don't think he's going to be off. To me, right here, he kind of looks, I would say, drier than France Pro. And again, this is at one day out. And I don't know what kind of peak week protocol is he doing, but like there are protocols, sometimes bodybuilders like dry out only the last day. I mean, you still can't make any super drastic changes in one day, but like a lot of bodybuilders do it that way where they hold their water and sodium at the same level until one day out. That's when they carb up and everything. And then on the day of the show, they drink less. They, they probably 
cut the sodium the day before and maybe they take some diuretics the night before and the morning off and you know they dry out you know that day and especially since this is a two-day show maybe Samson is planning on coming even sharper for the finals now again if he wants to win he needs to be peeled and we did not see his glutes here now I know a lot of you guys don't think glutes should matter that much but it's just not the case, glutes are the biggest muscle in human body and it's where basically almost everybody stores the most fat at so he needs to get him dry did he do it? I don't know at a France Pro they kinda looked okay but not to the level where he can win the Mr. Olympia however, based on Fuad's podcast and yeah, of course Fuad is biased I mean, he's, he's a sponsored athlete but Ian Wallier also kinda confirmed that Samson's glutes never looked uh, that uh, dry you know, he said it like his skin was very tight, which is unusual for Samson, and that was at like uh, two days before the show, so there was still time to, you know, dry out even more, carb up, and, you know, make that uh, muscle full so the, the skin will stretch more. So, I mean, based on this video, this story, you know, close up, you know, high quality uh, video from a, from a good iPhone, I guess, you know, he kind of looks okay with conditioning. Again, is he gonna be able to beat Derek and Hardy? Unless they are off, it's most likely not gonna happen, but I am not losing all hope. After seeing this, I, I now think there is a possibility. A small one, yeah, but, you know, I think anybody in that top four can win the Mr. Olympia now. I can even see Andrew Jacked potentially winning it. We'll see, maybe this year we're gonna have a change of direction. Maybe they're gonna go for taller, more aesthetic, bigger guys, bigger physiques and not former 212 bodybuilders what do you guys think about that? tell me down below in the comment section alright, next we got an actual physique update from Rafael Brandau at the day of the show this is a most recent physique update from him and this is basically what you're gonna get on that stage it's possible that he's going to dry out even more but I don't think he needs to I think this is basically a pretty, pretty nailed peak Right? I mean, he is not in his condition that he was bringing uh, back when he was working with Chris Asito when he was a lot smaller, but the combination of size, of fullness, of thickness, and conditioning, I think they pretty much nailed it. I don't think Rafael could have looked any better this year at a Mr. Olympia, and I think he is bigger than he was at the Arnold Classic. So based on this, I mean, can he be top 5? That's the only question, really. I think it's going to be very interesting, it's going to be a very interesting battle between Rafael Brandau and Brandon Curry and Martin Fitzwater. And as far as like the weaknesses, I think Martin and Rafael have the least amount of flaws. You know, Brandon's legs from the front and from behind, they don't look like this. They don't look, they don't look anything like this. They're definitely a lot smaller. And now that Rafael is a lot bigger than he was last year or actually two years ago because he didn't compete at the Mr. Olympia last year, I mean, there is a possibility. He was 10th, his last Mr. Olympia, and he was significantly smaller. Now, I don't think he's going to dwarf any of these guys. Like, I think Martin and Brandon are going to be bigger than Rafael, still. But I think he probably got close enough with size. And then, with his shape and structure, small waist, beautiful lines, classic, classic look, aesthetic look. I mean, with this symmetry and everything... I think there is a big possibility of Rafael actually cracking the top 5. We still have to wait and see him from all the angles, how lean is he from behind, how thick he is from the side and this and that. But based on what I'm seeing right here, I think he has a really good chance of cracking that top 5. What do you guys think? We also got a physique update from William Bonek at one day out. It's not much, it's only side tricep. It's really difficult to conclude how conditioned he actually is. Like, he's not showing his back, he's not really showing his front shots. Side tricep has been lately uh, his best pose. But based on this photo right here, I don't see any, you know, crazy grandiness, crazy um, wow factor. To me, it seems like he is not as lean as he was uh, at the Spain Pro or Dubai Pro. I don't think he's bringing that kind of conditioning. At least it doesn't look like that in this photo. Again, it's only one pose. Maybe the lighting is not perfect. Maybe we're not seeing exactly what's going to happen on the stage. But I don't see any crazy kind of conditioning. So, you know, I had him in my top 10. 
But after seeing what John Jewett is bringing, what Akeem Williams is looking like, it's very possible that uh, William Bonac is going to be pushed out of top 10 and placed like 11th. But then, at that 11th, he has guys like Mohamed Fouda, who I don't think he can really beat William Bonac, but what about John De La Rosa? John De La Rosa seems to be, you know, in good shape. It seems like he's bringing something pretty solid, right? Like, he looks big and round for him and, like, very conditioned as well. And earlier this year, he was battling uh, against Akeem Williams, and Akeem Williams was very much on at the Arnold Classic. At the Arnold Classic UK, I think John won against Akeem in the pre-judging, but Akeem closed the gap in the finals, so, you know, maybe John De La Rosa is going to be right behind uh, Akeem Williams and take the tent, or it's going to be John Jewett, or maybe actually William Bonac. But based on what I'm seeing, uh, I don't think so at this point. However, everything can look much different on the stage. We'll see in hours, guys. That's right. So stay tuned for more Mr. Olympia content. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Once again, stay tuned, subscribe. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.